in Hebrew. The earliest manuscript of Matthew is not in Hebrew, it's in Greek. So, what evidence do you have that these men actually wrote these accounts? But, but, okay, at that time the language spoken was um, Aramaic, right? And then people would speak Latin, some people would speak Latin because it was the official language of the Roman courts. Very rarely, educated men who were businessmen would speak Greek these trading. These men, according to the Bible, were uneducated fishermen. Yeah? So it's very unlikely that they would have spoken Greek. That's, that's quite true. Um, if you look at 1st and 2nd Peter, um, Peter was writing through um, a scribe in 1st Peter. Yeah. And the Greek is very kind of He was then writing on the and 2nd Peter. And um, that would mean that he was very educated man, but it's still the Greek language. So do it for people at the time. Um, because of Alexander the Great, they actually... Okay, one minute. So, I've got the Bible with me, right? Let's see what the Bible says in the book of Acts. Oh, me, no, no. <laughs> yeah, here. In the book of Acts, chapter number 4, verse number 13. They saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. I, I didn't dispute that. I was just yeah. saying that in Second Peter, yeah. Man, yeah. Still yeah, but I'm, I'm saying, from what I've just said about the language that was spoken at the time, right, which would have been Aramaic, and then Greek was only known due to businessmen who had trade routes. <coughs> how is it likely, how can you then assume that these two men knew Greek? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, but again, my sister, John and Peter, both of these, not just you, only just Peter. There's nothing to affirm that Peter wrote this account. Sorry, I, 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 was, I, I was addressing the statement you made. I, I know, but, yeah, but, this, yeah, but this is what I'm saying though. You're then saying, your evidence is, if you look in the Gospel of Peter, Peter was clearly a learned man in New Greek. How can you affirm that Peter actually wrote this account? How can you affirm that Peter himself actually wrote this account? The Gospel, the gospel, no, the gospel of Peter, yeah? How can you affirm Peter actually wrote that account? But by Papias in 130 AD. No, no, no. Papias, Papias is a different person. Papias attributed the gospels to these four men. Okay, so why you, where do you get first Peter from? No, you said that you said Peter. So, sorry, I was you were claiming that in that um, Peter was an unlearned man. Yeah. And you made the argument that the, the Bible says it, I didn't claim that the Bible. But your argument was there for the to spoke Greek. And I'm saying actually Peter did write in Greek. Okay. And I just made an argument to And that. what's the evidence that Peter wrote in Greek? So as I said, if you look at first Peter, yeah. Peter was written by Peter, and second okay. Peter was second Peter. Mm -hmm. The first one he wrote for a scribe, and the Greek is very good. Okay, okay. He wrote on his own, and you can see that it's written by a very unlearned man, but okay. it's still in the Greek language. And further, all you need to is very different to classical Greek. Okay. Classical Greek that was used by, you know, the that's an intellectual academic person. I'll say why I believe that's an issue. First, we're presupposing Peter wrote Peter with no evidence. No, I know, but I'm but your evidence is based on the on the on the gospel of Peter, right? His epistle. That's it. That's your evidence is based upon the epistle of Peter, right? I'm saying the first issue is that we're presupposing Peter wrote this account. The second issue is, according to the interpreted dictionary of the Bible, which I quoted, it's estimated, right, that the Greek manuscript to preserve the 5,000 um, manuscripts. These manuscripts differ 150,000 to 250,000 times. 
So we can't actually affirm what the original pi pistol of Peter actually said. Um, sorry, FMLs keep reporting, you know what these variants are. Yeah. The 200,000 variants. I, I, gave you, I gave you one of them first on 5.7. I'll give you another one. The adulterous woman was not in P66, a very early Greek manuscript. Okay, that's again, so that's one manuscript. Yeah, yeah. I did it earlier, it doesn't necessarily The next it's, question it's, I would yeah. ask does removing first John, uh, yeah. sorry, John, John 8, but not the John, does yeah. removing that affect any doctrines of Christianity? No, not really, no. Okay, I wouldn't so, be so. So why are you bringing that up? What's you did it. You, I mentioned first on 5-7 as well. Okay, so... That does affect the doctrine. That actually doesn't because the doctrine of the community can be proven from many, many other parts of the That's a different discussion and we can discuss that if you want, but I would argue it doesn't. I would argue that your strongest evidence for the Trinity is first on 5-7. That's quite actually true because the Trinity also includes the fact that the the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are distinct persons. Yeah. Within the first book, my seven doesn't actually know that it's in the fact that they are Yeah. So, okay. So, okay. So, my sister then, we can let the people decide if they're satisfied with the answer you gave regarding the preservation and authorship. If you want to debate the Trinity, I would argue nowhere did Jesus himself actually clear cut say that the Father is one, the Son is one, and the Holy Spirit is one in essence. Yeah, sorry, just to clarify, I was addressing a specific point about preservation. You told me yeah. we do not know the original yeah. because we have 200,000 variants. I, yeah. You and don't. I asked you to give me examples of the variants. And I did. And you gave me um, John 8. Which is not in the earliest one of P66. It's yeah. not in P66, yeah. it's just one manuscript. Yeah. So obviously, if you talk to some other Christians, you might tell you something different. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, one apparently earlier manuscript doesn't necessarily disprove or date. But to be in the Bible from the very beginning, it continues to remain in the Bible. I, have, I see no reason for me to be removing John 8. You can talk to another Christian, you might make the argument that it's okay so to remove that. If this current Bible has John 8 in it, and I have a manuscript even earlier than this current Bible which doesn't have John 8, how would you reconcile between these two? Because issues? the majority of the manuscripts contain it, yes. and the, the tradition, the historic tradition of the Christian church has always preached on John 8. The Christian church, and I'm sure you know this since you know your church history, they had many debates on the canonization of the Bible and what's actually both being the Bible, what's not. Even the book of Revelation, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't added to the canon until the 4th century. So we can't really use it as an argument. That's actually not true. That's, so if you actually look at John 8, um, if you look at some of the writings, so for example, St. Augustine in the 4th century, there were people who were trying to remove John 8, and Augustine actually talks about the reasons why they wanted to remove it. Yeah. And one reason was given that men were worried that their wives would become adulterous, and so they wanted to take up this passage. But Augustine affirmed, along with everyone else, that this passage should remain in the Bible. Polycarp, who I talked about earlier, I know you this yeah. but he also quoted John 8, and yeah. he was referred to as well. So very early on, you see this being included in this kind of scripture, yeah. and it's being preserved after the point. But the f okay, I'll give you another example. First John five seven. When was it known that this is not supposed to be in the Bible? So again, it, it depends who you who you talk to, and I don't want to. I, I don't think it matters that much to, into the doctrine of the Trinity. What I'm saying is this: I'm saying you have a passage in the Bible which has been used for many years to prove the Trinity. Now it turns out that this passage is not even supposed to be in the Bible, it was a margin note. I'm saying, how long did it take the Christians to figure that out? See, I, would, I don't actually agree with that, so I'm you, sure there are other Christians who might argue that point, you, but you, I personally don't agree. You, 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 like you don't that. agree that First John 5 7 is a margin note? I don't, no, I don't agree. So, okay, what's the earliest manuscript that had it? So, just because we don't have um, a physical copy today, the manuscript that contains it doesn't mean that it's not. But we have manuscripts that are missing from it, that don't have it. Well, we have some very, some more recently discovered manuscripts. From the 10th century onwards, they did, but nothing before then. But actually there was a dispute over the yeah. Anyway, so yeah, but before then, there was nothing that actually had done I mean, to compare, So it? the thing is, I, I don't want Christians to argue because either way, Christians who agree with including first John 5 7 Christians who don't, we all share the same Bible, we share the same doctrine. So even if you, you want to say, okay, let's, let's exclude first John 5 7, there are many Christians who would argue that that was a later interpretation and we can see that from the early manuscripts and so we prove it. But we can't see it from the early manuscripts. It was a margin note added later on. You know what I'm saying? That the early manuscripts don't include it, therefore we say that it's not, not part of the Bible, yes. Okay, so that's what some Christians say. 
But would you agree with that? I don't personally, but it doesn't affect the doctrine of the Okay, so what I'm saying now, first John 5 7, that's one example, right? I'm saying if it's the case that with first John 5 7, it was added later on and we didn't know that until much later, I'm saying from this entire Bible, how do you know what is added and what isn't? What's supposed to be in the original Bible? What isn't? Because first John 5 7, how long did it take you guys to figure that out? So I'm saying all of this Bible, how can you now affirm what's supposed to be in it, what's not? Yeah. Um, okay, so I, I don't want to argue another Christian. I'm, I'm asking you, you. Okay, so but I don't I don't believe in taking up personal Christ. So okay, I don't okay, so you so even though if I'm not mistaken, I think it was added in the 15th century, if I'm not mistaken. As a, as a margin note. The first the first manuscript that had it, it was at the margin note. I don't believe there's any manuscript earlier than the 15th century that had it. Right? You're telling me that even though for all those centuries, 15 centuries, no manuscript had it. The first one was in the 15th century. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, 15th century. You're telling me that you still believe it belongs to the Bible? So what, what's your evidence that, it's, that it was added in the 15th century? Like, Can you give me one manuscript that had it earlier? But the fact that I can't actually show you an earlier manuscript doesn't mean that it wasn't in the The burden of proof would be on you. It's like me saying, it's like me saying, we have the first century Quran from the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you say to me, can you prove that? And I say, I can't prove it, but can you prove that I don't have it? That doesn't make any sense. No, I'm, not say, I'm not saying to prove you don't have it. I'm just saying that this was always, so it might not be in any of the manuscripts that we currently present. Yeah. So that doesn't mean it wasn't in any manuscripts. And the church is so, always, like the church is always referred to this verse as if it's part of the Bible. So I don't see any reason. Yeah, but from the 15th century onwards, not before that. I think it goes, you can find it can you name me one person you refer to it further than that? I can't think of any way to my head. So then, is, aren't these just empty claims without any basis? But I, I did say to you from the beginning, I don't want to debate personal by seven. Yeah, but, uh, no, but what I'm saying then, I asked you a question, I said, from this Bible, how can we affirm what is supposed to be in the text and what's not? You said that wouldn't apply to me because I still believe first John 5 7 should be in the Bible. So, does it really make much sense, my sister, to say, I still believe it should be in the Bible, but I'm not going to debate why I believe that? I'm just saying that this is something that is disputed amongst Christians. And the reason for that is we do have all of these manuscripts that we can use to determine what we think is the Bible and what isn't. Yes. And this is a disputed subject that not all Christians yes. agree on, but I want to talk about the things that the Christians do agree on. But the, what I'm saying is that we're very open about our variants. We all know what the variants are. We often have all of the manuscripts and we can, they're open for everyone to see the same as the front. And we can look at the different manuscripts to compare them and determine what we think but. is the that's what I'm saying. Again, that's not the case because it was the 15th century onwards where the Christians actually figured out this is not supposed to be in the Bible. So you cannot use this argument about we have many manuscripts. Yes, you do. I don't deny that. But we can clearly see that Christians have a problem actually verifying what's supposed to be in the Bible and what's not. And that's evident from 1st John 5 7. But let's, let's just say everything you've said is, is true. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. That's one that's yeah. so, so, And it doesn't actually affect any doctrines because the doctrine of the Trinity is... That that's a, I don't agree with that. And if you want to debate that, we can debate that. But it's a separate topic. If you want to discuss that, we can discuss that. But then, if we have one verse and we can't affirm if it's supposed to be in the Bible or not, what about every other verse in this Bible? Can't, can't we apply the same criteria then? Because I'm saying, that a few, a few, let's say a few hundred years ago, Christians would have looked at First John 5, 7, say, this is the Bible, we have early manuscripts, this is the Bible. Then later on, Christians said, no, we've discovered earlier manuscripts that don't have it, it's not supposed to be in the Bible. I'm saying, how do you not know that you're not going to have the same issue with everything else in this Bible? But, I mean, we know what all the variants are. But like, your, them, your so. first manuscript was from the second century, P52. And scholars such as Brutz Metzger, he actually differs and believes it's from the third century, not even the second. So you don't have nothing to go back on. Yeah, but if you have enough manuscripts, you can tell what the original was. If you don't need to but the original. Ag again, as I showed you from the interpreted dictionary, these manuscripts differ between 150,000 to 250,000 times. And I, uh, okay, but the only meaningful difference you've been able to give to me is first from 5 7. Right. Most of these other variants are actually very, very minor uh, details. Like, so, the, the difference okay. between one or two letters. So, don't any fundamental let's see what the, so okay. I'm not a Christian scholar, neither are you. Let's see what the scholars say. They say, um, if I can find it, <laughs> okay. Many thousand, many of the thousand variants which are found in the MSS 
and the NT were put there deliberately. They are not merely the result of error or of careful or careless handling of the text. Many were created for the theological and dogmatic reasons. So your own scholars, this was written by 300 different scholars, they themselves are saying the variations in the Bible were put there on purpose because that's what people believed the dogma and the, um, uh, the theology of Christianity is. Okay, but isn't it interesting that it's apparently Christian scholars who are making that point, so they've been able to figure that out. So it's not like yeah. this seems to be deceived by yeah. people who have been trying to add in documents to the text. It's so obvious that their interpretation, if, if what we're reading is true. So yeah. it's not anything that's hidden, it's not something that Christians are being deceived I, I, by. I know, I know Christians are aware of this, but then I'm saying, how do you then affirm what is supposed to be scripture and what's not because this book does not give you the That's answer. That's actually not true. The fact that they're able to tell that they've been added is yes. because they have been able to reconstruct but did you, They and don't know. They know that there's variations. They do not know. No Christian on this planet knows what is original scripture and what is the added variation because your earliest manuscript is P52 from the 2nd century. You have nothing from the time of Jesus or the disciples. The scholars saying they do know what the They did not say that. That's what they, they did said. not. They no, they, they did not. They did not say what verses they know have been added. They did not say that. Well, if you, I'm sure if you read further, they'll be able to tell you. We know do, what the Do you want to read it then? No, what I'm telling you is that we, the 200,000 variants, yes. we know all of them. Yes. We know yeah. exactly what they are. Yeah. So the reason these scholars are able to make a claim that some of them have been added deliberately yeah. to the Bible yeah. is because they're able to look at all the manuscripts and see clearly, oh, this is something that's been added, and probably for this reason. But First John 5 7 says otherwise. P66, okay. the other woman say otherwise. The people who wrote this book yeah. would agree with the Queen Fathom 57, and they think that because they have enough manuscripts to testify against it, they can see yeah. it as a clear interpolation, yeah. and that's why they've removed it. Yeah. If you want to open the scholars of this book, that's what they tell you. Ultimately, the people who wrote this, and myself and others who think Okay. We so, know all of the, we don't claim to have an un. I, I know that. I know that. Whereas the Quran, yeah. the claim is this yeah. has not changed. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So I, you, yeah. Uh, well, not you personally, but the Quran needs to prove itself. Yeah. The Bible, we've already said there are some things that we need yeah. to sort out here. Yeah. Whereas the Quran yeah. claims to be yeah. perfect. If you talk to some people on the other side, they can show you quite a lot of. Yeah. Well, I don't know what it that's, is, but quite a lot of that's the, that's, differences. That's the difference. So that destroys one that's, claim. That's the different discussion. What you're talking about is Afrof and Kira'at. Do you know what that is? Afrof and Kira'at. No, okay, so that, that's a different discussion, and I can have that discussion with you too if you want to. I'm more than happy to. But what I'm saying is, we're about to head out. So okay, we no, won't no, have no, that discussion no, no problem. If you if you have to go, I don't want to keep you waiting on it. So I appreciate talking to you. It was a nice discussion, in it. I like talking to Christian. Well, I appreciate the respect. It was nice to meet you. Right. Good, yeah? Yeah. 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 Do you know where the guy is that who owns the mic? Do you know where the brother is that owns the mic? I'm not sure, brother. I just, I just came halfway through, so I don't even know who he was. I gave it to you. I need to see the brother that I, I don't know whose mic it is. And he, his camera is off. Yeah. I don't know where the guy is. Hey, bro, are these your cameras? The other one is just for the tall guy, but. I don't even know if you take the thing off. Hey, yo, Mo! Mo! Hey, Mo!